Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and welcome back to Tears of the Kingdom. Today we have a special video to do with the best bow in the game, the Lionel Bows, which fire not one, two, but three arrows in one go for one single arrow, which is particularly incredible when you think about fusing, where we take, say, bombs and fire one bomb, but get three bombs. That's right, we went from 14 to 13, yet we just fired three bombs. And then again, say fire through, send out some fire arrows. Now I'm firing three in one go. That's absolutely insane. This, of course, leads to ridiculous DPS potential. Whether you're triple headshotting or making it easier to headshot or blasting enemies with their main weakness or elemental effects, triple in one shot is great and the damage on these bows is insane. This is a mighty Lionel bow. It has 23 damage that it's firing three times in one go due to its attack up buff plus three. This is a bow you can get very easily without ever fighting a Lionel. You just go to a specific cave that's easy to get to and then loot the chest. Technically, you don't even have to fight anything in the cave to get it, so it's pretty insane. But further, we can keep this bow alive forever using a new durability trick with some Oxo Rocks. This is what's giving us the attack up bonus and restores the durability of our weapon. Compared to the trick where you're keeping a weapon alive by keeping the fuse part alive, using the Tarry Town trick, the NPC that takes the attachments off but keeps the durability of that full, this is quite comparable and you can combine the two to have incredible weapons forever. The thing is, you can actually get a better bow than this one. You might get lucky and out of that chest, pull a Savage Lionel bow, which is arguably the best bow in the game. That is 32 damage fired three times for one arrow. And of course, you can increase the damage again with the attack up buff plus three to get it to 35 damage. Imagine that with all the elemental arrows firing off on a target, the DPS can be absolutely incredible. We can keep it alive again forever and buff it up even further using this trick. Let's first explain how to get your hands on the bow. The cave you need to go to then is the cave Cape Kales Cliff Base Cave, which is just on the edge of Cape Kales, this sort of plateau cliff edge. This is at the southeastern point of the map, as you can see, and near it is the Lurlin Village, which is currently taken over by monsters until you clear it. Nearby shrine here, so the northwest, it's probably a nice fast travel point. You can also take the Skyview Tower and fly over there to get down there, but what you want to do is not actually go to the cave itself, but land down here on the edge by the beach. As you can see, as I fly down to this beach, there's some pre-set up Zonite machines. This gives us a pretty easy way to make like a boat or a surfboard or something, fly around there, make a boat and go around there with a fan, use a control panel, it makes everything easy. And it just makes getting through that area a lot easier because if you've got a mobile uh, machine, it's gonna make it easier to get onto the boat you need to get into. Either way, you go around to the gate and you're not gonna be able to enter unless you whistle by pressing down on the D-pad to call a horse. It's kind of like a trick to get you in there. One way that the game tells you this thing exists and to whistle is by the notes. As you explore the game and find the Yiga clan you will find notes that tell you to go to a specific place or reveal secrets around the map and this is kind of one of those things where it's like you need to whistle so now you know either way you whistle the gate opens you go in and you're going to need to get onto the boat use whatever method that feels good to you there are many ways to climb a boat. I just used a auto build spring, which sends me forward and up, which was the perfect height to land on the boat. Worst case, there is like planks around the place that you can build a bridge with, whatever you need to do. Clear out the enemies or ignore them, whatever, and then climb the main mass. At the top of that is gonna be the chest that we're looking for. Now inside this chest will be the Lionel bow, but it can be two types. It might be the mighty bow, which is the weaker version, or it might be the savage one, which is the best version. The savage version comes with two types though. You might get quick shot, which would be nice, or the five shot burst, which is incredible. But either way, it's gonna be an awesome bow. Unfortunately for me, I pulled the mighty, but Josh has the footage of the savage that we're able to look at. And yeah, it really is like that straightforward, that easy. Go to a cave, loot the bow and you're good. Of course, you can clear the rest of the cave, killing the enemies and make sure to kill the frog in the corner and that'll tick the cave so you know it's complete. Hopefully you're lucky or progress enough so it's the savage bow, but now we've got to keep that bow alive and make the most use of it. This is where the Octo Rocks come in then. You'll need to come here to the northern section of the map to go to Goron City. Octo Rocks are all around the Death Mountain region. And of course you can say with Sensor Plus, scan them and be told where they are nearby you. But just to make things easy for you, there's actually three spawns in this area that are really easy to get to uh, just north of the city. I come along this track and spot the first one 
the top right here by these schools. Then there's another one over to the west and another one up to the northwest. Either way, as I go through the tracks here, you can see it flying by or we can just drop down. It's very easy then. All you need to do is take a weapon you want to restore durability to and upgrade and drop it on the ground. It will suck it in and then sort of chew on it for a second and spit it out. It will now have its durability restored and you'll have a new effect, a new passive. If you're lucky with the bow, the plus three attack is insane, just maximizing your DPS even further. I was lucky to get it on my bow and so was Josh. And you can just do this with any weapon that you want to keep or restore its durability with. The problem is this Octo Rock that I've just used is done, you know, it's, it's done its upgrade. So this one will never upgrade another weapon piece or armor. So you must kill it. And then as a Blood Moon rolls around and all the mobs and enemies of the game are restored, that Octo Rock will be back in that place and you can use it again. Blood Moons are just a feature in this game that ignores in-game time. Apparently it happens once every week or in-game time of just under three hours. I've been told that it's something you can't just like sit at a camp and reset the day repeatedly to force. It must be actual three hours of game time that passes. But either way, every Blood Moon, these guys will respawn and you can upgrade and restore the durability of all your favorite weapons or your strongest weapons. I really recommend you do this whether you're upgrading this bow or not. But if you have a particularly strong weapon like this Lionel bow without having to fight Lionel to get one, keeping it alive and making the most of it is obviously a good idea. As you can see, there are other perks than attack up that you can get on your bow, such as the durability plus. Obviously, you won't have as much DPS if you don't get the extra attack, which does apply to, you know, every single shot. So it is pretty major, but getting durability plus up means you won't have to deal with this process nearly as much and you'll have a bit more safety in how long you can use the bow. So I guess that's up to you whether you want to run multiple of these Octo Rock uh, upgrades until you get the thing you want or you just take the first thing. Since we're talking about it though, I will again mention the Tarrytown vendor. We made a video about this and how to keep your maximum damage weapons alive forever. Of course, fusing is a big part of that. If your weapon is going to break, you can actually take off the fused material. Normally, you can go to your menu and choose destroy fused material, and that will actually destroy the fused part. It's now gone. So I wouldn't want to do this on this, which is actually a good fused material, because then it would be gone. But I could go to the Tarrytown vendor, spend a small amount of money, have that carefully removed so it's ready to go and be used on a different weapon. The weapon will not have its durability restored, but you can keep that fused part alive pretty much infinitely for a small amount of rupees. This is a great method to know and one I definitely recommend. We have a full guide on this topic though on the channel right now. But there you go, that's the Lionel bow and how to get one without actually fighting a Lionel and you can do it right at the beginning of the game. If you play it enough, you get lucky, get a savage one, that will be incredible. But even the mighty version is a worthy weapon. If you guys have any relevant tips and tricks that might help someone, any extra information, then do drop it in the comments. Appreciate you guys getting involved with the different guides we've talked about, adding to our topics and giving useful information. But until next time then, expect more guides and content on Tears of the Kingdom on the channel in the coming days. For now, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye